Enshrouded has just dropped its biggest content update to date, and it's jam-packed with tons of new features, including a brand new region to explore, dual-wielding weapons, major class changes, and just tons of quality of life improvements. If there was ever a time to try Enshrouded, it is right now. So for this video, we're going to be breaking down the patch notes and go over everything that's coming to this latest build for Enshrouded. The first major feature for this update is going to be this brand new explorable region called the Blackmire. A brand new passage has emerged on the far north side of Revelwood, which is going to allow us to traverse into this brand new mysterious region. And I personally have to say, this area looks fantastic. It's almost like this kind of wild forest with these gigantic trees, and the roots are like as big as towers or a castle even. And it also looks like there's a really good mixture of like a forest, but then also kind of like a swamp. In the trailer, it looks like there are a bunch of these like kind of bogs where if you land in them, you will obviously sink down into them and, and your character will die. So that's going to be a really interesting mechanic to deal with. But it also looks like this just isn't going to be a brand new kind of empty region. It's going to be jam packed with tons of new features and just things for us to do like new quests, challenges, places to get more skill points, new enemies, and of course brand new music to go along with the theme. I personally cannot wait to check out this new zone and just try to find all the really cool places to build a base. Another really big feature that's coming with this patch is a very requested one, and that one is going to be the long-awaited player-based quest progression. So what this means is basically, whenever you join a multiplayer server where the host has already progressed through all the quests, now if you are a brand new character, you could still join that server and do all of the quests by yourself that that person's already done. And why this is such a big deal is because before this update, if you were to join a server where the host had already finished everything and you wanted to, you know, complete some quests and progress your character, you really couldn't because all those quests were tied to the host and his, uh, his server. I'm really excited about this feature because now you can, you know, create a brand new character and just jump on any server you want and just play the game. Another really awesome feature that's coming to Enshrouded is going to be the ability to play musical instruments. That's right, players will now be able to find and rescue an NPC, which is basically a bard, and she's going to allow you to craft different types of instruments that you guys can play, and you know, just have some fun and kick back, and you can even play these different instruments together with friends, or just by yourself. Next up, we've got the Vanity System, or aka Transmog. So what this means is that you guys can equip certain gear and items in the game to give you whatever stats you need, but then if you don't like the look of that outfit, you can use this new system to basically alter the look and appearance of that outfit. So you can really look like whatever you want, but still rock the stats from the previous items. Moving on to some more quality of life changes, it looks like we've got some permission settings coming to servers. So it appears that the hosts of these different types of servers can now enable passwords for various types of players and give different types of permissions to the people on this server. So I guess the idea they said that this is to combat players from logging into a server and just going in your base and just looting stuff out of your chests. And I think this is a really good quality of life improvement. Me personally, I think they really should just add locks to the game that you can craft and just set those on your chests. I think this like server setting password type thing is a little bit kind of awkward, I guess. So yeah, I think in the future, they should definitely look into allowing us to craft or just lock our chests. Another really big feature here is that they're allowing us to dual wield daggers. That's right, if you guys want to live out your rogue lifestyle, you guys can now dual wield some daggers and just go to town on the enemies. This is definitely a playstyle that I thought this game really needed, and it sounds like it's going to be a very kind of like fast paced playstyle for combat, so I'm really looking forward to trying this out once the patch goes live. When it comes to the classes in Enshrouded, it looks like this patch is coming with a ton of changes and adjustments to the different classes and playstyles. I'm not going to go over every single one of these in this video because I don't want this video to be 20 minutes long, so I'm just going to give you guys a quick little cliff notes on some of the changes for the classes. When it comes to mages, they felt like the damage output for some of the spells and just mage abilities in general it was a little bit too high, so basically mages are getting a ton of nerfs and some adjustments to their spells, especially wand players. So wands are getting a bunch of nerfs and I really feel like going forward, wanding is not really gonna be a very viable way to play this game anymore, but that's just me. For warriors, they have gotten some changes to two-handed weapons and just, they've adjusted the scaling and just damage output from melee weapons in general. 
So basically they're saying that the damage output for melee characters early game was pretty good, but it kind of falls off once you get to those higher levels and you know, mages kind of overshadow them. So basically they have done some scaling changes to certain abilities. So like the too long didn't read is basically warriors should be doing a lot more damage at those higher levels. Rangers have seen a ton of new changes thanks to daggers being introduced to the game, but it looks like a really interesting thing that they're doing is they're going to be adding some new improvements to the AoE damage of Rangers so that you guys can actually, you know, take out larger groups of enemies and not struggle with that. One thing that's got me kind of scratching my head is that they say that daggers are not going to be as powerful as swords and they're going to be more of like a support kind of thing to the ranger playstyle. I really hope that's not the case because I would love to just do a incredibly overpowered kind of dagger playstyle. Now this is really cool, so they're adding some new arrows to the game. The first one is magic arrow and this is basically going to be you spend mana casting these arrows instead of consuming arrows itself. So you could just endlessly shoot these magic arrows and not have to worry about crafting new ones. And then it looks like they're also going to be adding some explosive arrows. Then basically the idea here is that they're going to be some early access to splash damage. So thus again, helping with that AOE aspect of playing a ranger. And they're going to be reducing the crafting time and cost of these arrows. So let's rapid fire some more of these kind of lesser changes to this patch. So completing quests will now reward experience. To compensate for XP from quests and additional areas in the Revel Wood area, the XP needed to level up has been adjusted accordingly. Meat-based food in Kindle Waste tier now has duration values that are better aligned to other cooked food of this tier. Cleaned bandages now also remove the poison status. The buff you get from bandaging will now properly expire when you receive damage. Bows now lose durability as intended. Armor perks that give a damage bonus for skills like Merciless Strike now give a significantly higher bonus on late game equipment. Rogue armor from the Warrior now feature a bonus for the skill Merciless Strike instead of a bonus for Sneak Attack. Improved status for the Radiant Paladin Helmet and the Gloves. The Explosive Power Ball Net can now correctly be crafted. A new type of equipment can now be found in the world called Vanity Outfits. Vanity Outfits don't have any gameplay stats, but they can be equipped in the Vanity slots to override the visuals. So again, this is like transmog. They moved the recipes for the grappling hook and gliders to the essentials section. Metal star maces can now drop in better quality than common. The opportunity damage perk on items has been replaced with merciless strike damage and sneak attack damage. And after that, there still are a ton more changes and fixes to the game. But again, like I said, I don't want this to be a super long video. I just wanted to get out all of the kind of big major things that most people are interested in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please let me know by leaving a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks again for watching. I'm still solo and I'll see you all in the next one.